Well, here we are at the Green Meadow Waller School in the Eurythmy Room. Yes, we are. And, and just outside is the Rose Hall, where we have been very privileged to see uh, scenes of the mystery dramas, the, the last one, the Soul's Awakening. And of course, here we are with, maybe you can tell me a name first. I'm Barbara Reynolds. I am the director and producer of the mystery dramas, together with the Threefold Mystery Drama Group. Mm -hmm. In this production, we have 38 people helping out artists, actors, musicians, eurythmists, and tech, tech people. Tech people, we need those. We absolutely need them. And we I'd, would love to have more of them. <laughs> I'd, I talked to your tech uh, fellow, the one upstairs in the, in the booth. Matthew what? Mesner. Can you say his name again? Matthew Mesner. Mesner. Yeah, he's, he's wonderful. Yes. And, he, and, and because there was a change in the venue, pretty la well last minute, so he had a whole new lighting board to get used to. Uh, not only a lighting board, he also had to hang many new lights. Uh -huh. He has probably spent close to 50 hours in the hall wow. trying to set lights. To get it up. And of course, the lights have been beautiful. I mean, I absolutely so. lovely. Yeah. Excellent. So, so maybe now we can go back a little bit because uh, in a way these interviews are about how do young people find their destiny and how do they act out their passion? And uh, so maybe we can go back to see, uh, was there anything in your childhood uh, growing up, big turning points where you kind of knew, ah, yeah, this is what I have to do? Not per se. I happen to be a person who acts rather quickly on an intuition. Mm -hmm. A lot of my life has gone by intuition. Mm -hmm. When I was 17, I had my first big Europe trip, together with my father and also meeting people in Europe, um, related people, family, distant family that I hadn't met. And I had a strong yen to go back to Europe. Mm -hmm. So I arranged the next summer when I was 18, because my grandfather lived in Dornoff, Switzerland, and my mother was staying with him a little longer. I had already come back to America. Maybe you can just mention uh, the name of your mum, because My she's... mother is Maria Reynolds. Reynold. Yeah. That's R-E-N-O-L-D. Right. No, I know S. Because I met her when oh. she was here in Spring Valley, and she showed me, uh, she showed me the monochord, and she explained the 432 to me. So she's very, very dear to me. Anyway, and she so, wrote a book, I don't know. Yes. It's a rather thick book. Yes. To yes. be able to try to plow through it. Yeah. But for somebody who's a musician, I think that is any, I mean, I, I can encourage it totally. Excellent. So, yeah, yeah. So, so anyway. I had her ask the people at the Gautianum if I could get a summer job. So when I was 18, I went for a summer job to the Gautianum in Dornach in Switzerland. And from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. every morning, I cleaned the toilets of the Cotillon. Oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and for that, I was given room, a, a place to sleep, which was downstairs in a basement with bunk beds, mm. no hot water. Mm. We'd bring down pitchers of hot water when we wanted to wash our hair. There you go. And we were allowed to eat at the Speise house. And the rest of the day was free for us, and we were allowed to go to the um, performances and things at the Gautiana. That summer, they were doing all four mystery dramas ah. in German. I had basic German, uh, conversational German. Can you remember the year? It was 1968. Wow, okay. So... In 1968, at the age of 18, for some reason I was really drawn to these plays. And though my German was not that good, I sat through them three times. <laughs> Except the last time I would more sneak to the scenes that had 
Lucifer and Aramon in, in it. it. Yes, yes, I was more interested. You can in that. tell. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Somewhere a seed was planted in my soul there, and it was very interesting because that production in 1968 still had the pupils of Marie Steiner in the predominant roles. When I went back in the early 70s, 71, I believe, um, the production had changed to the next generation taking on the predominant roles. And I quite strongly remember that transition when I saw them. 1976, I went to Dornach, first for what I thought was a year, and I ended up staying five and a half wow. and doing the speech training, ah, yes. speech and drama training at the Goethe Anum. Mm -hmm. There we were privileged to often be allowed to go to dress rehearsals and performances. And so the whole work with mystery dramas began to live in me even more. Went to Australia for a year to work with Mechtel Harkness in English speech before I came to what was then called the Waldorf Institute, what became Sunbridge College, right. where I was the speech and drama teacher for 24 years. Soon after we moved from Southfield, Michigan to Spring Valley, New York, the idea began to live in me. Could I, would I, dare I mm -hmm. begin the work on the mystery dramas. Mm -hmm. That was my second moon node. I was then. Well, this is what I was just thinking. The first moon node, and it comes back again. There we go. So I always liked the second drama best. So in that incarnation of the mystery dramas, mm -hmm. I started with the second one. Oh, there you go. And I just did a couple scenes one year, and a few more scenes the next year, and a few more scenes the next year, and then in 1990, I took what I thought was a big plunge to do the entire play, having worked for three years in groups of scenes, which we brought to production, to performance, mm -hmm. here in the auditorium at the Threefold Auditorium in Spring Valley, New York. Mm -hmm. That was the beginning of the journey of feeling that I could try to bring a an entire mystery drama to production. Over the next years, until 1998, I continued with the third drama, which we brought to production in full production in 1993, the fourth drama, which we brought into production in 1996. In those middle years of the 1990s, I adopted two children. And I was so, around when you did that. <laughs> I thought, gee, now she's going into motherhood. How wonderful. Yes. I, was, I, I, I kind of met you when you were just in the process of them coming. Okay. It's just amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I needed a little more help. Uh, I didn't become a mother until I was almost 45. Anyhow, two wonderful children who came into my life. That work culminated in 1998 when Virginia Cease tried to create a festival in Dornach with groups bringing the Mr. Dramas in English. Mm -hmm. And we brought the fourth one. That was the summer of 1998. Then it rested in me in giving over to motherhood and mm -hmm. also my work at Sunbridge College. And as my work in Sunbridge College looked quite strongly like it was coming to an end, which indeed it did in 2007, in 2006 I started again the work with the mystery dramas. And this time decided it would probably be a good idea to do the first one too. Mm. Well, so, wasn't, that, wasn't that then the third moon note, roughly that speaking? That was my third moon note, exactly. <laughs> I've been following you. 56. <laughs> Amazing. So that work began to develop and came to the point where it culminated in deciding 
to do the entire first play ended up exactly on the 99th anniversary of the first time the play was played in Munich in 1910. Oh, yeah. We did it in 2009, mm -hmm. so we were a year early from one perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that began the work of doing summer conferences, doing one play each summer. Mm -hmm. The project enticed people from really around the world. So mm -hmm. I, my Capacius comes every summer from London. My Maria comes down from upstate New York. My Strader comes from wherever he happens to be at the at moment. At the moment. He's in Illinois. Yes. Um, I interviewed him too. Okay. He told his so story too. We have. It's been interesting that this work has gathered a whole group of people. Yeah. yeah. Not only locally, but coming from a bit afar. Mm -hmm. So that started the work. 2009, we did the portal. 2010, I decided I would go to Dornach and see their new production oh, yeah. of the Four Mystery Dramas. So I skipped that year, but then in 2011, we did the second drama, mm -hmm. The Soul's Probation or The Testing of the Soul. Last summer, 2012, yeah. we did The Guardian of the Threshold, the third mm. drama. This year, we are doing the fourth drama, yeah. The Soul's Awakening. Yeah. In that time, a, an absolutely wonderful, crazy, exciting, scary, courageous thought came into my consciousness, would it be possible to do all four plays That's right. within the context of one conference in 2014? That would be the anniversary of the starting of World War I, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a decisive moment in the history of the 20th century. It would be the year when the fifth mystery drama, which was never written or is never brought down by Rudolf Steiner, mm -hmm. would have come down had World War I not erupted. Mm -hmm. It's something that has never been done by a group of amateurs. Now, our company has a mixture of amateurs and professionals, and one can feel that the strength the professionals bring into the work mm -hmm. makes this thought even vaguely possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I mean, financially, it would be. I mean, financially, it's it's even still it's this way. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So we'll have to find a lot of friends. Yes, we're hoping for a lot of friends. friends. Yes, yes. So. We are going ahead mm -hmm. with this project. It will be from August 8th mm -hmm. to 17th, 2014. Mm -hmm. Right. Nine days of a festival conference. Every other day would be a performance. The days in between would be a conference, mm -hmm. which we're really beginning to try to work on that would perhaps have a bit of a different flavor mm -hmm. than these summer conferences. Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do these dramas really reflect, you could say, where the entire anthroposophical movement is today? Mm -hmm. What do we learn from the dramas? Not only the anthroposophical movement, but the life questions of human beings incarnated in the 20th, 21st century. And how these dramas speak to that. Yeah. As I like to say, Rudolf Steiner's mystery dramas are the wild 